Well, let's get some more analysis from our international affairs commentator, Doug Herbert. Uh, Doug, I mean, Felicia Kabuga, whichever way we look at it, is not a household name. Uh, but for criminal prosecutors all over the world, this is about as big a catch as you could ask for, isn't it? Tell us more about him and how he managed to evade justice for so long. He, he really was, Tom, the biggest fish uh, in the international hunt for fugitives from a genocide that now uh, dates back 26 years. And his arrest uh, near Paris today is also a reminder uh, that even a quarter of a century later, uh, those fugitives uh, can still be captured if you're given the proper coordination. Uh, this was a, a collaborative international effort between uh, police and agencies from France to Belgium uh, to London police were involved, uh, Germany, Austria. Uh, really, you can just go across the map. Uh, as you said, he'd been living under a false identity and he, he had invaded, evaded justice for that quarter of a century. Kabuga uh, was really part of an er inner circle uh, right near president of the time, Habar Yamana, uh, the Hutu president of the time before the genocide. Uh, and they are the ones who very early on set up a campaign, undertook a campaign uh, against the then Rwandan Patriotic Front, which was the minority Tutsi rebel front at the time. This was back in the early 90s. Uh, and leading up to the genocide, which uh, you'll remember uh, erupted uh, on April 6th, 1994, uh, leading up to that, it was really Kabuga who both trained and equipped the inter Hawame uh, militia that, that waged this genocidal com campaign, but also formed the propaganda radio and TV outlets, and also bought the machetes that were used for this massacre of nearly a million uh, Tutsis and moderate Hutu. So he was the bankroller, as you said, a very big arrest today. OK, now that he's in custody, what happens next, Doug? Uh, what happens next, in short, is he's going to be brought before first the Paris Appeal Court here in France. Uh, eventually, he will be uh, pro brought before the International Court in The Hague, which will have the international jurisdiction uh, to judge him on uh, crimes for which he was really originally indicted uh, three years after the genocide ended. In 1997, the UN indicted him on seven counts of charges, inclu including those of genocide and crimes against humanity. Uh, when he is brought, well, I'll say if and when, but more when he is brought before the International uh, uh, Criminal uh, Tribunal at The Hague, uh, he will be judged for the crimes against humanity charge. Like I said, it is the biggest fish uh, to be caught to date in among the fugitives of this genocide. Uh, there have been more than 70 prosecutions of, of big players in the genocide by the uh, the International uh, Tribunal for, for Rwanda, which has since been wrapped up, but also over 10,000 prosecutions in local Rwanda courts. There are still a few fugitives out, where, out there, but this is a big, big victory for uh, international justice today. Okay. Our international affairs commentator, Doug Herbert. Thank you very much indeed.